and all the scholars in the university, university of Princeton cannot do it. Only a Muslim can explain the world today. But it has to be a Muslim who knows how to study the Quran, who has the proper methodology for studying the Quran. And I was blessed, it was a great blessing, to be the, the student of a teacher who taught me that methodology. His name was Molana Dr. Muhammad Fadlur Rahman Ansari Rahimahullah. And he established the Alimi Institute of Islamic Studies in Pakistan, Karachi, where I studied. And he died about almost 40 years ago. But because of what I learned from him, I can say today that only a Muslim can explain the reality of the world today. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam told us, that Allah created someone and then programmed him using computer language programmed him to impersonate the true Messiah and so he's known as Al-Masih Al-Dajjal Dajjal the false Messiah and since he has to impersonate the true Messiah and convince the Jews that he is indeed the Messiah he will have to do what the true Messiah will have to do namely rule the world from Jerusalem from the state of Israel in this book which was published 10 years ago Jerusalem in the Quran we said that he would have to liberate the Holy Land. Liberate meaning liberate for the Jews. Why can't they understand that? Liberate means liberate for the Jews. From our perspective it's not liberation. The Holy Land is now in slavery. Why can't they understand that? He's already done that. 1917. This is the implication of the British victory over the Ottoman Islamic Empire, the army, in 1917. He will have to bring the Jews back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own. He's already done that. Between 1918 and 1948, when Britain ruled over the Holy Land on a mandate conferred by the League of Nations. He would have to restore a state of Israel in the Holy Land 2000 years after Allah had destroyed it he has already done that Israel was born in 1948 he'll have to cause that Israel to grow and grow and grow in a short space of time to become a superpower he's already done that and he'll have to cause that Israel to replace the United States of America in the same way that the United States replaced Britain as the ruling state in the world so that in the same way that Pax Americana replaced Pax Britannica so too will Pax Judaica replace the current Pax Americana He's on the verge of doing that now. And so he was released into the world a long time ago. A long time ago. But in addition to weaving this web of deception in consequence of which he will ultimately rule the world from Jerusalem and get the Jews to believe that he is indeed the true Messiah. In addition to that, Allah programmed the Dajjal to test every human being on the face of the earth. 
And after studying Ilmu Akhilu Zaman or Islamic eschatology for many, many years of my life now, I have now realized that we are being tested by Allah through the Dajjal. And that mankind has only two choices before them today. Either you remain faithful and loyal to Allah and faithfully follow Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam or you're going to worship Dajjal. This is the realization that I have come to. And I'll give you examples of how he tests us. I can give this example because I have studied international monetary economics. I've done it at two universities. I wrote this little booklet here. The Gold Dinar and Silver Dirham Islam and the Future of Money. After giving this lecture at Masjid Umar ibn al-Khattab in Damansara Heights four years ago, Dr. Suleiman Mahboub, who is the Director General of the Prime Minister's Department of Economic Planning, was the chairman of that lecture. And after the lecture was over, he and the others asked me to write this. And they said, please write it in not more than 50 pages because the Malay are not going to read it if it's more than 50 pages. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us money. The money is in the Quran. The gold dinar is in the Quran. The silver dirham is in the Quran. Yes. And Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam also gave us money in the sunnah. And money in the sunnah is dinar and dirham. And when there is a shortage of dinar and dirham in the market, then he said gold for gold, silver for silver, wheat for wheat, barley for barley, dates for dates, salt for salt, equal for equal. All six were used as money. Hmm? We don't have the time to analyze the hadith, but from this hadith we know that money in the sunnah was either dinar and dirham or commodities of food consumption which were in abundant supply in the market and which had a shelf life which were durable. In all six, the value of the money resided inside the money. So money has intrinsic value. In all six, the value of the money was created by Allah. And He and He alone creates from nothing. He is Khalik, the one who creates. He is Fatir, the one who creates from point of origin, so the originator. But in addition to that, he is Badiyu Samawati Wal Al. The one who creates from nothing. Only Allah creates wealth from nothing. And this is the money that we had until that civilization came along to test us. And with the scientific and technological revolution,